Thank you for the kind introduction. It is great to be back in Rhode Island. And because I did my training in uh, springtime in Rhode Island in Newport, I knew exactly what to expect weather-wise. I uh, appreciate you lining up this, uh, uh, this balmy day for me. Um, uh, I'm uh, so pleased to be here, and I am here uh, partly with the heart of a, a former mayor and as somebody who is the product of a low-income river city that was partly transformed because people came together uh, with the right mixture of patience and impatience to get big things done. And that's what I see here uh, with so many leaders who had a hand in getting those big things done. Uh, I want to thank uh, Senator Reid uh, for waiting a full five to ten seconds before putting in a good word for the bridge uh, package that is before the <laughs> Department of Transportation. Uh, uh, you, you should know that you have a fantastic federal delegation uh, in Senator Reid and Senator Whitehouse who have done so much, not just to advocate for specific projects, but to make it possible for the Biden-Harris administration to deliver the historic funding that is adding up now almost to the $2 billion mark uh, for infrastructure in Rhode Island. Uh, I want to recognize, likewise, Congressman uh, Magaziner and Congress Congressman Amo. Uh, they spoke uh, with rightful pride about the funding that they've secured in the appropriations process to support projects. Uh, like these, but are also uh, partners and were critical to us getting this bill done. Of course, uh, uh, Gabe can take credit for this with his former hat on as well, his great colleague in the administration. Uh, and uh, my friend David Cicilline, who played such a key role, was with us uh, every step of the way as we fought to get that done. With, with all of these members here, I want to remind everybody that this infrastructure legislation that we now can't imagine living without was regarded as a pipe dream even after President Biden got elected. People said, you can't actually get this done. Everybody says they will. The last president said he would, but you can't get it done. You definitely can't get it done on a bipartisan basis. The obituary of this legislation was written again and again and again. Uh, and yet you have uh, five current and mem former members of your delegation uh, who uh, believed in it just as the president believes in it and made sure that we got here. Uh, I want to uh, thank Governor McKee for the warm welcome to, uh, to this state. As he mentioned, we just came from touring the Washington Bridge. Uh, and I want to make sure all Rhode Islanders know that we see the importance of this bridge and the significance of these disruptions for people uh, around Providence, East Providence, and the entire region. And we're committed to working with the governor, working with the Rhode Island DOT to support your work in successfully rebuilding this bridge. This, uh, this is a top priority in the And we know that we can get big things done there too because we've seen the fruit that the partnership with the delegation with the state uh, are already bringing to us. Uh, the uh, $27 million for, for the broader urban trail network, which means safer and more efficient bike pedestrian connections across the city. The, uh, planning grant going over in East Providence, where I sat with the mayor today to hear about the impacts on the business community of the current bridge issue. Uh, but we're working right now uh, to help make sure that the Six Corners interse intersection is safe. Uh, the uh, $82 million headed to rehabilitate the Pell Bridge over Narragansett Bay. The $81 million to help build a connection between Quonset Business Park and I-95. Uh, and out of that $2 billion uh, and counting out of the infrastructure package, about $1.5 for transportation needs alone right here in Rhode Island. And the Greenway that we're celebrating today is a product of that same partnership, an example of what it is like to live in America's infrastructure decade. Uh, I know that this takes a long time to make something like this happen. Uh, sounds like 30 years and counting. And it takes leadership. And I know that uh, my friend, Lieutenant Governor Matos, uh, was leading on this back in her city role and continues to be a champion of this project. Uh, today, so thanks for everything you've done since the beginning to get this done. Um, Mayor Smiley, uh, uh, congratulations, Mayor, on the Safe Streets for All grant that we're working together on. Uh, thank you for your attention to roadway safety, and thank you for your leadership. The, the role of a mayor has only gotten more challenging and more difficult and more demanding since I proudly wore that title just a few years ago. Although it would have been nice back when I was mayor to have a trillion dollar infrastructure bill. <laughs> so, you know, in that sense, we hope to be making things a little easier. Uh, and also just had a, a great uh, conversation with our uh, federal highway team, so thanks for everything that our folks on the ground here are doing, uh, led by our federal highway administrator, Bob, who has also been uh, focused on uh, uh, the bridge and other issues here in Rhode Island from, from day one. Uh, and the last acknowledgement I want to make sure to make, again, as a former mayor, I know that there's a difference between the talkers and the doers. 
and you don't get anything done without community leadership. And so uh, the Winnosquatucket River Watershed Council uh, is uh, the kind of organization that uh, I, I always sought out uh, when I was mayor, and we're proud to be uh, teaming up with you there. Uh, and yes, I spent a lot of time pronouncing, uh, uh, practicing how to pronounce Winnosquatucket, so if I'm 90% there, I hope you're giving me credit. We're really excited about how this is going to add up to a safe path for people to walk or bike uh, or roll separated from vehicle traffic. And that focus on safety that we've talked about is especially important here because uh, I, I want to make sure everyone understands that when we talk about greenways, uh, active transportation, uh, good, safe, protected uh, means of getting around when you're not in a car, that is not ornamental, it is fundamental. Uh, because life and death uh, difference is made uh, by the safety of these ways to get around. But they have to be connected. And what we're recognizing today fills in one of the last remaining unbuilt pieces of greenway. The ability to travel safely and, I would add, affordably uh, from, uh, uh, from points west, uh, Olliville, to, to the jobs and opportunities in the Valley District, the, the connections to downtown Providence, and, and really the whole region because of how it connects in to the train station especially for a neighborhood in an area that has lower than average rates of car ownership. And you shouldn't have to bring a ton of metal with you everywhere you go in order to thrive, in order to prosper, in order to get about your day. Also, green infrastructure. Uh, stormwater, uh, again, as only a former mayor could, I love hearing about the stormwater benefits of a good transportation project because that can mitigate flooding, build better resilience, uh, and bring great environmental benefits. So it's with all of that in mind that I'm so proud to be here, and the Biden-Harris administration is so proud to be at your side to break ground on this Winnosquatocket River Greenway Improvement Project, and we all have a lot to celebrate doing that together. <laughs> Just a couple other notes. Uh, I'm told that St. Joseph's Day is a big deal around here, so uh, as uh, somebody who uh, is a graduate of St. Joe High School, uh, in St. Joe County, whose father and son are named Joseph. Uh, I, I'm thrilled that on a day named after a carpenter, uh, we are taking up this construction work, uh, and, uh, and it, it couldn't come at a more fitting time. The president of the State of the Union that many of us were privileged to be in the room for uh, just a few days ago talked about the greatest comeback story never told. And I think we're feeling that across the country, and we're certainly uh, feeling that right here in, in Providence and right here in Rhode Island. Uh, you know, we've uh, put it another way, uh, we've seen a lot of others breaking promises. Uh, right now, we're here breaking ground, which is what all of this legislation and all of these efforts are about. So, uh, again, I want to congratulate everyone who worked so hard to get us to this point. I want to thank you in advance for all of the hard work we're about to do together, both to see these projects through and to make sure there's more where this came from. And I couldn't be more thrilled to be with you to celebrate your good news. Thanks very much. We have time for uh, one or two. Okay, sounds like we have time for a couple of media questions before we uh, get on to uh, turning some dirt here. Secretary, as part of the Washington Bridge situation, there's been some discussion about the moving bike lanes right now. Well, without being able to speak to all of the details of, of the particular project design or how it goes through its phases, I think uh, the big picture is we want to make sure we move toward uh, more accessibility and not less, uh, more bike and pedestrian connectivity and not less. Again, that's something we think about in terms of the network as a whole, so there are always going to be uh, changes to individual pieces of it, but we want to make sure that at the end of the day there's better connectivity. Uh, and again, I've been talking a lot about uh, uh, the mayor and his focus on safety recognizing that this isn't just about recreation, although recreation matters economically and quality of life. Uh, this, this really is about the safety uh, of, uh, of getting around our communities at a time when uh, the biggest category contributing to the rise in roadway deaths in recent years has been bike and pedestrian fatalities. Uh, bike infrastructure helps us fight that trend. Uh, Secretary, uh, It's possible. I can't speak, speak to the split in advance only because we don't yet know all of the different uh, pro programs that could contribute funding, and each one brings its own rules. So whether we're talking about formula dollars, which are uh, uh, funding the bulk of the vision as, as we understand it, 
or the discretionary grants that uh, I know will also be uh, applied for. Some of those have a match requirement. Some of those can be waived. So we don't know the ultimate mix, but I would say that uh, uh, it's certainly possible that it could be more generous than the regular model uh, in terms of the match, uh, depending on which sources of the What's that? Again, it, look, it's going to depend on, on the different uh, programs that, that fund it, right? But, but we know that, uh, uh, that this can't get done without a lot of federal funding. Uh, and just like the rest of the bridge network that we're supporting right now, uh, we have levels of federal funding which just weren't possible a couple of years ago. Uh, we want to put it there. Thanks very much for coming out. Appreciate it.